Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to take a moment to showcase uh, two of my more recent mods that have come out. Uh, didn't get a chance to do a showcase when I released them because uh, we're doing all the uh, Southeast Asia animal DLC reveals. So let's jump in here and I wanted to show off my first cat mod. This is the Amur Leopard. So this one took quite a while to get out. I ended up um, basically having to do the entire spot pattern on them to get it right and get it looking uh, to where I I felt it was acceptable. Uh, I, I do hold myself to some pretty high standards when it comes to the quality of my mods. I'm not going to put out something that I don't like and that I'm not happy with, but we do have the leopard. So this makes, now you have two leopard options for your games. We have the African leopard uh, that was put out, I want to say it was... Uh, uh, I want to say Tosca and Mega T-Rex, who did that one? Possibly incorrect, I'll look that up and make sure. And then we have the Amur Leopard, so they're both the same species, just different subspecies. Uh, the other one is the African variant, this is the Russian variant. So, which is why we have them here in the snow biome, because I wanted to show that off. How good they look in the snow and all this. Uh, they do spend quite a lot of time climbing. Uh, edited the jaguar data so that they don't swim as much they do swim a little bit but they want to spend quite a lot of their time climbing so we take a look at them here up close with it paused you can see uh custom texture custom model the head is a little bit smaller the body's a lot slimmer they're a lot furrier than your jaguar uh, they also have uh, pale green eyes we have a melanistic version, so we do have the Black Panther version. I wasn't quite sure uh, when I was researching Amber Leopards whether or not they actually did have the melanistic version. I was under the impression that was more of an African and Indian variant, but apparently it does show up at least in the captive population. So we have them here, and then we have the cubs, and I, I just love the cubs. Uh, I, for some reason, I, I have a... I despise doing juveniles for some reason, but I actually did put a lot of time into these ones. They actually have blue eyes, custom spot pattern for them as well. So they came out really nice. Very, very happy with these cats. So they do have a full Zoopedia entry. Uh, custom Zoopedia photos. All the information is as correct as I can get it, including their wild population, their ICU and status. Uh, custom Zoopedia map. That's their current range. Uh, former range would have been more, uh, would have been the whole Korean Peninsula, northern China, all of this area of eastern Russia. So species data. Uh, group size, they do like one to two because they are solitary animals. One male, one female. Obviously in this little uh, showcase zoo I have, uh, I have welfare turned off. So, you know, I have a ton of them in there. That's just so I had options for taking good screenshots. Uh, all this information is as correct as I can get it. Uh, research status. So they use all basically the same enrichment as the jaguar and the other big cats. Uh, fun facts. that They do have their own uh, special fun facts. They're not all really actually fun, but they're in there. So yeah, that is the Amur Leopard. Uh, fully updated for 1.5. It will not crash your game anymore. The animation bug has been worked out, so they are all ready to go for the new update. Now, on that note, you will have to reinstall your mods whenever a new update comes out. That's just how modding works. Especially when you have an update that messes with every single animal in the game. Uh, if they hadn't added in that flexi-color animal thing, which does work on these, by the way. Uh, yeah, if they had not added in that little... Flex color update, uh, it probably wouldn't have broken every single one of them, um, but then again, maybe it did. Maybe it would have. So, yeah, just be prepared anytime we have a major update. Be prepared to back up your game before it drops. Uninstall the old mods, reinstall the new mods. And as modders, we do try and get our updates out as quickly as possible. Remember, most of us don't get early access. So we're just working, uh, we get we get the update DLC the same time you guys do, and we scramble to get our updates out. 
So that is the Ammer Leopard looking all majestic here in the snowy biome. Now uh, these cats, they do have, oh, come on. If I can click on, okay. We'll just find one that's not in the plants. There we go. You're not moving. So they do have their plant coverage. They like a lot of plants. They can, uh, pretty wide variety. They do have to have some coverage, but you can basically make the habitat as full or as bare as you want it to be. Biomes are taiga, uh, taiga and temperate Asia. So most everything except for the arrowwood brush in here is stuff that they like. So you can make very uh, accurate habitat. So fits well really in, in your snowier zoos, in your North America parks, anything like that. Uh, yeah, we have that. So I'm going to move over to our next animal, which is going to be the Scimitar Horned Oryx. So I will join you again in that zoo. All right, welcome back. So we're over here in our desert zoo here, taking a look at the second uh, mod here that uh, I've put out recently, which is the Scimitar Horned Oryx. So these guys were a lot of fun to do, uh, trying out the new modding method where we can take base game animal, pair it with DLC animal files, and create something uh, that's kind of a hybrid between the two. As you can tell, this is using the Gemsbok rig, so Gemsbok's base game animal. We can't really use the base game files because uh, it's just an utter uh, insane amount of data to slog through to attempt to get one uh, basically pull out the files for one animal. So I was able to pair this with the reindeer file data, so they may use some kind of odd enrichment here and there that would be more reindeer specific, but they are functional in the game as a standalone species. So Scimitar Horned Oryx, native to North Africa, basically exists on the edges of the Sahara, or at least they did. They are currently extinct in the wild. Uh, there are several captive breeding programs, though, of uh, different zoos that are keeping the species alive. There's a plan to reintroduce them to the wild. There are a couple of um, projects already underway in Chad and Niger, where they have them uh, basically living in a wild state, but in a fenced area uh, to keep them safe from predators and poachers until their population bolsters up enough that they can uh, eventually turn them loose. So yeah, these guys were super, super fun to do. It's my first ungulate mod, which has been uh, kind of a refreshing change because I was doing just the canids there for a little while. Uh, custom horns on these guys. Uh, so. They are longer than the Gimsbach horns. They curve backwards and they curve outward at the tips a little bit. Uh, Try to get them as accurate to the scimitar horned oryx, uh, the real animal, as possible here. So they don't do a whole lot. They they they're kind of a mix between the reindeer and the Gimsbach animations or or behavior. So they just kind of kind of wander around and walk around and sometimes they run around a little bit but great addition to your zoos to your desert sections or your endangered species sections anything like that really interestingly marked animal so doing this texture was a load of fun uh, they turned out great i um, really thrilled to have these in the games they are an absolutely beautiful species and i really like them so for their zoopedia they do have the full uh, Zoopedia treatment. As you can see, we have our custom Zoopedia images. Everything here is as correct as it can be. In their description here, natural habitat. This is their uh, kind of their former range and some of the reintroduction area. Uh, biomes are grassland and desert, and continent is Africa. So species data. We have. Uh, live in a group size of 5 to 20. So they do live in large herds, so if you are playing with welfare turned on, you'll need to have quite a few of them. Uh, but yeah, good large amount of, you know, a good big herd of oryx for your zoos. Everything else should be as correct as possible here. They're a bit smaller than the Gemsbok, which is uh, more accurate to real life. And then we've got uh, our custom fun facts, and then the enrichment that they use. Again, 
yeah, they, they use a little bit of the reindeer enrichment, um, which is, it, it's fine. I, I just kind of left it. Sure, they, they can play with the snowball, why not? Maybe a desert animal would find that really unique or something. Because if we take a look at the reindeer, yeah, they kind of use all of this. And I actually do need to go back in and put out an update so that they can use the new uh, scratching tree enrichment that was added with the 1.5 update. So yeah, they basically use the same stuff as uh, the reindeer. Yeah, so this is the Scimitar Horde Oryx, uh, another one of a, a really fun mod to make. Didn't take too, too long to do. Uh, the model editing wasn't too extreme or anything on this one. So yeah, these guys are available on the Nexus to download. Uh, fully updated for 1.5, we fixed all the issues with the crashing and the animation bug that then happened after we fixed the crashing. And yeah, so another ungulate antelope oryx species to add to your zoos, to just to increase the diversity of the animals in your game. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I do hope you appreciated this little uh, uh, close-up look at a couple new modded species, and I hope I will see you in the next one.